let's be honest, the James Bond series is predictable. You know, in a good way. You've got your action-packed cold open, the exotic locales, the despicable henchmen. And No Time to Die looks to be keeping up that tradition. Truly, this is a franchise so successful that it can sustain its own offshoot movie genre. Allow myself to introduce myself. James Bond spoofs. 25 films in, Bond has become unabashedly formulaic. And by now, we're all in on the joke. So we're going to make the ultimate Bond film out of some of the best Bond parodies, from the most affectionate to the most lethal. For this mission, we have all the spoofs in the world. Oh, good, then it's not just me. First up, all James Bond films since Doctor No have had at least a version of that iconic gun barrel sequence, as every 00 superfan knows too well. Just ask the ultimate Bond wannabe, Alan Partridge. Bang! Blood dribbles down! Let's grab one from Ardman's rodent animation, Flushed Away, who do a neat DVD hole gag. Or if you'd like a bloodier gun barrel joke in your sights, here's Jason having a decent swing at it in Friday the 13th, part six. <laughs> As for the brassy opening number and seductive title sequence combo, let's turn to Spy Hard and its spoof song from, who else, Weird Al Yankovic, having a lot of fun with the hypersexualized silhouettes and the clunkiness of jamming the title into the lyrics. Spy, you better spy Next, we'll need a bond -alike. You could pick Streetwise Eggsy from the Kingsman films, who scrubs up very convincingly as a Daniel Craig stand-in. Are we going to stand around here all day, or are we going to fight? Or, if you're feeling old school, Derek Flint from Our Man Flint, for those who fancy some American charm. Smile, sir. If you'd rather keep things in the family, an uncanny choice would be Sean Connery's actual brother, Neil. That's right, Connery, Neil Connery as seen in the ropey cash-in OK Connery, a.k.a. Operation Kid Brother. Then there are the alluring yet dangerous femme fatales, and there are so many to choose from. But let's stick to actual, genuine Bond girls, many of whom have popped up in parodies after their official appearances. The Johnny Englishes are blessed on that front, with Die Another Day's icy Rosamund Pike taking a more romantic turn in 2011's Johnny English Reborn. I don't know how to thank you. I'd love a takeaway. And Quantum of Solace's Olga Kurylenko recast as an antagonistic Russian spy in 2018's Johnny English Strikes Again. An all-time high, however, is Dr. No's forever iconic Ursula Andress appearing in the 1967 official spoof Casino Royale as Vesper Lind, and, absurdly, a kilt-wearing double agent mowing down a crowd with her machine gun bagpipes. Goofy gadgets are also a big part of Bond's enduring appeal, so we better pick up some gag gizmos for our cue branch. What do you think this is? Let's grab Steve Martin's tape recorder-shaped pen from the Pink Panther 2. You know, so he can write down notes without people noticing. It's actually a pen. As well as everything handed over to Melissa McCarthy in Spy, which really takes the unglamorous agent joke to the nth degree. This antifungal spray can freeze and disable any security system. Wow, that is quite an image to be carrying all over Europe. If you're hankering for something more powerful, in the Johnny English series, him again, there's a pen that shoots tranquilizer darts, and in another English outing, there's a pen that's also a grenade. Basically, if the accident-prone MI7 agent is wielding any sort of stationery, run away. I'm looking for a car. As for Bond's Super Swish set of wheels, you cannot beat the amazingly named Finn McMissile, as voiced by Michael Caine in Cars 2, who looks more than a little like James's Aston Martin DB5 from Goldfinger, only with a touch more explosive weaponry. Then there are the villains the authors of all Bond's pain. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. The baddest and baldest of the bad guys is, of course, Blofeld. And there's only one man, two men, who can properly spoof him, Dr. Evil and Mini-Me. You take special care of him. He's my special boy. 
Undeniably the king of big screen Bond bashing is the legendary shagadelic chauvinist Austin Powers, baby. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Whose trilogy features some of the most inventive and direct double O parodies in the business. There's Mr. Bigglesworth, eccentric henchman, a ridiculous villain lair, and an obsession with elaborate trapdoor deaths. Why must I be surrounded by frickin' idiots? Not to mention the inherent Bond spoofness of every ridiculous character name in the Austin Powers series. Random task. I'm Basil Exposition. Listen, Shagwell. Robin Swallows. A lot of vagina. Ivan the Humperlock. And I've on a toilet made out of solid gold that's just not in the cards now, is it? <laughs> But forget the fakes. Ultimately, part of why we love Bond so much is that self-awareness. The double entendre, the sly winks to the camera. Swan, what do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. What you have to remember is that when it comes to making fun of Bond... This never happened to the other fella. ...nobody does it better... Dark. ...than the Bonds themselves. We've nothing to declare! Well, them and the Queen. Good evening, Swan.